questions. Um, just a few announcements. Uh, big, big thank you to the second grade teachers and practicing and helping me getting this together. So thank you, second grade teachers. Thank you. Another huge, huge thank you to all the parents that are behind the scenes. You should have seen the Harris and the Combs behind getting the uh, who's from Whoville ready. Thank you, parents. Thank you. Um, Miss Sullivan, Casey Sullivan, is live streaming this. So if any relative or friend that cannot be here, you can watch this live on the Facebook page. You go to the live stream on our Facebook page, or you can go to the JISD website and you can log on to there. Um, if you would like a copy of this program, uh, Ms. Sullivan is recording this, and there is a form in the back of the auditorium that you can pick up and fill it out. For one copy, it's $10. For three copies, it is $20. Just fill it out and turn it in to the elementary office and we'll get you a copy. And without further ado, let's get started. like Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right, or it could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the Who's, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in the town. For he knew every Who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings. He snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake right in early and rush for their toys. And then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, the noise, the noise, the noise. <laughs> then the who's young and old would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then, Thank you. 
and then they'd do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the hoots would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought. I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I've put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? chuckled and clucked. Ha, ha, ha. What a great gritty trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I cannot find the reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Oh, Max! Then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head.
Then he loaded some bags and some empty old sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, and the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quite snow filled the air. All the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one, the old Grinchy claws hissed and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. <laughs> then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace blue, where the little blue stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. And then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimney. Then he slumped to the icebox. He took the Who's Feast. He took the Who Pudding. He took the Roast Feast. <laughs> he cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Well, that Grinch even took the last can of Who Hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, and the Grinch, I will step up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small poo little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. But you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought of a lie, and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little pot, the fake Sandy Claus lied, there's a light on this tree that won't bite on the side, so I'm taking it to my house workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there, then bring it back here. And his fifth bull the child. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and stone and wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still a bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled. Packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. 3,000 feet up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rolled with his load to the tip top to dump it. Richest little honey. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. 
They're just waking up. I know what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then all the who's down in Newville will all cry, Boo hoo! That's a noise. That's a noise. That I simply must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He stared down at Hugh Bill. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Hugh Bill, the tall and the small, was singing without any presence at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours, till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch saw something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more.
himself the Grinch carved the roast beast.